Abe's Fish, A Boyhood Tale of Abraham Lincoln by Jen Bryant. Abe woke to the sound of a cabin door opening and closing. He jumped up, pulled on his pants, and ran outside. Where are you going? Pa asked when he heard Abe approaching. With you, Abe answered, trying to sound natural like this was what he did every day. Pa stopped. He put his axe on the ground. Abe stood beside it, breathing hard. Go ahead then, Pa offered. Go ahead and lift it. With both hands, Abe grasped the handle. He pulled up, up, up until his wrist burned. The axe was, was too heavy. With one hand, Pa lifted the axe. With his other hand, he gently squeezed Abe's shoulder. Maybe next time, said Pa, and disappeared into the trees. Abe picked up a rock and tossed it hard. There was no need to hurry back to the cabin. Abe was sure he'd be spending another boring afternoon picking berries with his sister Sarah. But Ma surprised him. Why don't you take your fishing pole over to Knob Creek? See if you can catch us a fish for dinner. Abe did not have to be asked twice. Compared to picking berries, fishing was grown-up work. Besides, every several days of turnips, after several days of turnip soup, and little green apples, a fish dinner sounded mighty fine. It was half a mile down the road to the best spot. Abe baited his hook, dropped his line, and settled himself on the bank. Fish, fish, fish. Abe turned the word over and over again in his mind. Fish, 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 he whispered to the water. Abe loved words. He loved speaking them out loud. He loved writing them with the stick in the dirt. And on the days he went to school with Sarah, Abe loved reading them too. Tug, 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 tug. Abe tightened his grip. He remembered what Pa had said. Hold steady and pull at just the right time. Abe held steady. When his hands felt the full weight of the fish, he yanked the pole upward, swinging the line behind him. Gotcha, he cried. Abe had one worm left, and he rolled it in a damp leaf, and he, smiling to himself, put it in his pocket. A nice surprise for Sarah's pillow tonight. The late day sun warmed Abe's back and, and deepened the red of a ripe apple that hung by the roadside just out of reach. Abe tried three times to poke it down with the stick, but the apple refused to drop. I wish I was, I wish I was tall, he thought. Reluctantly, Abe walked on his shadows, his shadows stretching longer and longer before him, his fat fish swinging at his side. Already he could smell it cooking over the fire. He could see Ma smile and feel Pa's pride. Even Sarah would have to admit Abe had done well. Then all of a sudden, someone was coming. The man had a rifle. He walked quickly. Soldier, Abe whispered. Last spring, when a group of soldiers passed the schoolhouse, Abe asked, who are they? Americans heading north to fight the British, the teacher explained, interrupting the lesson. Why, Abe persisted. For freedom, the teacher replied. Freedom must be a big deal, Abe thought, as he listened to his sister recite the spelling list in the classroom. Abe wondered about freedom. Once when he had put a cricket in a cage, it stopped moving and chirping, but when Abe let it go, it jumped quickly through the grass and started singing again. But people don't live in cages, thought Abe, so how could they not be free? Why would they need to fight for freedom? Abe remembered now what Ma had said when he had told her when he had told her about the men. We must be good to soldiers. Now here was a real soldier coming toward him, a stranger. Cautious, Abe moved aside. Hey there, boy, the soldier said, spreading his palm in front of him. Don't be afeard. I mean no harm to you and your fine fish. Up close, Abe noticed the man's torn clothes, his worn-out boots, and thought, He's poor like me. Abe 
Abe saw too how the soldier looked at the fish. It was a it was a hungry look. We must be good to the soldiers, Ma had said. Abe remembered the Bible stories he had read to him at night, and one in particular about a good Samaritan who helped a poor man on the road when others passed by. Abe start, uh, stared at his catch. He thought about how happy his family would be when they sat down to supper, a real fi fish supper, their first full meal in a week. Abe sni sniffed. He shuffled his feet, and he looked again at the fish. A long minute passed. Here, Abe said at last, lifting his fish toward the soldier. I can catch me another, I reckon. A wary smile spread across the man's face. Thank you kindly, he said, and started down the road again. Hey, wait, Abe called after him. Did you find freedom? The soldier turned. He fixed his gaze on something far away. I reckon I did see it sometimes, he finally replied, but other times it seemed a long way off. He waved to Abe and walked on. The sun was low now, too low for Abe to go back to the creek and try to catch another fish. Ma would worry if he wasn't home by dark. At the cabin, Sarah's disappointment greeted him. Didn't think you'd catch anything, she said. Abe looked down, shaking his head. I caught a perch, but I gave it to a soldier on the road. He looked hungry. Well, so are we. Did you think about that? Sarah scolded. Of course I did, Abe snapped back. I just reckoned he needed it more than us. That's all. Ma heard, and she pulled another turnip off the shelf, shelf and sliced it into the steaming pot. Go wash up, you two, she said, her voice firm but not angry. Abe was pretty sure Ma would give, would have given her fish to a hungry soldier. Pa came in, looking weary from chopping and clearing. Fish for supper, he asked. Abe shook his head again. Abe gave it away to a stranger, Sarah explained. To a soldier, Abe corrected her. He looked mighty hungry, Pa. Pa peered into Sarah's berry basket, and he sneaked Abe a quick wink. Then I reckon these will go fine with Ma's soup. Later that night, Abe gazed out the cabin's single window at the crescent moon lit up in a corner of the sky. Looks like a fish hook, he thought, or like the bend in the road where I first saw that soldier. Closing his eyes, Abe pictured the soldier by a campfire cooking the fish and then drifting off to sleep with a full belly. Abe's own belly groaned. Turnips and berries had not been enough. Abe tried not to think about it. Instead, he whispered the words he'd learned to spell in school. D-O-G, dog. D-I-G, dig. D-I-S-H, dish. F-I-S-H, fish. Dang, that made his stomach growl again. With his finger, he wrote words into the slate of night. Fog. F-O-G, F-L-A-G, flag. Pa said the flag stood for freedom, but what did freedom look like? Abe still couldn't quite picture it. Even the soldier hadn't seemed too sure. Freedom. He tried the word out in his mouth. It was a big word. Abe could tell. The next time he went to school, he would practice writing it. Someday, Abe thought it might be a good word to know. Thanks for listening.